Hello and welcome to Dawn Chorus Writes, a miraculous ladybug fan fiction and audio fiction. This is a new story called History Repeated and I hope you enjoy it. Massive shout out to Dory for her amazing, stunning commissioned artwork for the thumbnail. It is just oh beautiful so make sure you go and send her some love all her information is down below make sure you send me some love by smashing that like button comment down below what you think of it because there will be a part two so let me know what you think will happen in the next part and make sure you subscribe so you do not miss out on the next part or any other series or one shots that are happening at the moment and i hope you enjoy Part 1. Adrian's POV. We do that nearly once a week. It needs to be special. To show Marinette how much my love for her will never fade. Especially as we are going to be heading to university in a few months. So celebrating our first year together as a couple? Will you focus? You're about to die. Shift and roll to the side. Not like that? I'll show you! Plaid growled, zooming towards him. Adrian held up his hand. No! You are still in a time out. You have gone through two controllers already today. Do you know how hard it is to smuggle these in now? I think Natalie is questioning my sanity and anger issues towards video games. Adrian called out over his shoulder. Well... Like I've been telling you, with all the money you have, design a better controller, or better yet, VR. That is a hard pass. You believing you're actually in the game would mean you ending up Catalyst my room. Adrian rolled his eyes at mysterious laughter coming from behind. And we have talked about how a Kwame-sized controller is impossible. Why and how would that ever be possible? Then stock up, kid, is all I can say. Either I stress eat cheese or we go through controllers. Your choice. I feel like I'm losing on both counts there. Will you focus? You just miss another health pack there. And if you take another hit, to your left. To your left. Flag screeched across the room. I've got it! Adrian growled back, afraid to show the worry he was feeling towards his house and the intense possibility of it being disintegrated at any second. Will you call it? There, got one. Happy now? His character whipped a hitch back off the wall. I would be happier if you could get a grip on the shotgun and there wasn't a horde of space zombies after you. If you let me just take over this bit. No, stay. I mean it, Adrian shouted back. I don't mean to interrupt. Oh, is this the new one? Bunnick's voice filtered over the intense string music from the game. Adrian spun round, his eyes wide and able to blink even against the bright white light emitted from the burrow. Bunnick's? He drops the controller and vaulted over the back of the sofa. What is wrong? Wait, why are you here? Do you? He paused. She nodded her head. Since when? He studied the blue and white teammate in front of him. He had met the older version first, over three years ago now, and then saw his classmate Alex become Bunnix two years ago. Since then, he hadn't seen her, which, no offence to his friend, was a good thing. But he was trying to work out the age of the bunnocks in front of him. Oh, I discovered my friend was Cat pretty much straight after I said bye the last time. I saw you, well, you saw me in this time, dimension, doesn't matter. She waved her hand through the air. We don't have time for that. Hey, Cottontail! Plag was floating beside Adrian now and was staring at her with a serious expression Adrian hadn't seen all that often, raising his concern to eleven now. Why here? Why him, Cat? He held his breath, 
peering into the white circle and waited to see if Ladybug was about to step out of the burrow too. Hello? I need you to come with me. What's wrong? Ladybug? Plag? No! Bunnix held her hand up and both Adrian and Plag looked at each other. I don't need Cat for this one. I need you to put these on. She stretched out her hand holding the Ladybug Miraculous. You've been Mr. Bug three times by this point? Adrian stepped forward, scooped the earrings out of her hand and stared at them against the naked palm of his. Ladybug? Ladybug Miraculous. What has happened? Is she okay? Has anything happened to Ladybug, Bunnix? I can't tell you. You have to tell me something. Why I can't be Cat? Why do I have to be Mr. Bug? When? Why? What has happened that you need? Adrian wasn't breathing. His head was spinning, spiralling down a vortex of countless possibilities and none of them good. Adrian! Plague was grabbing his cheek and then his nose. Snap out of it! Ow! Okay! Plag backed off as Adrian rubbed his nose with his free hand, but he understood. He could breathe again. You good? This is not the time for that kid. Adrian nodded. I can't know. That is why... Plag shot a glance to his side. That's right, Cottontail. He said seriously. Tiki! Adrian quickly placed on the earrings and watched the red light form into a red and black spotted Kwame. She held the same stern impression as Plague. Okay, now his concern was a 15. Adrian? Bunnix? Plague? She greeted one by one but lingered on her oldest friend the longest, expressing words Adrian couldn't start to fathom. Tiki? Ladybug? The tiny Kwame glanced over at Bunnix and nodded her head. Concern was giving way to frustration. Somehow everyone had a vague idea what was going on except him. I need to know something. Is she okay at least? Was there an Akuma? Is there one now? Adrian stared at Plague, who at least shook his head in a no. Adrian, you know when you were Rabbit Noir, the whole time shift element. At the moment, the least you know the better, but we need to act fast if we can stop history from repeating. Bunnix, I get it. Time travel and theoretical physics, the butterfly effect, but what do you mean history? Adrian, focus. If get this right, we have to get this right. The look, the tone, told him all he needed to know. This was it. He was about to walk into a situation nightmares were made from, and if Bunnix came to him, there was a reason. There was a reason he had to become Mr. Bug. There was a reason Ladybug wasn't standing beside him like last time they had used the bunny Miraculous. There was a reason he couldn't be capped, or that Plague couldn't know. Adrian? Tiki's voice shattered through the walls and crumbled the dark cell he was forming inside his mind. You and me? We can do this! She gave his cheek a warm hug, then pulled back, narrowing her normally large eyes and stared at him. Whatever it takes, we will beat this! Yeah! He continually bobbed his head up and down, taking deep breaths. Tiki? Spots on! Right. Ready, Mr. Bug? We don't have much time. Bunnix looked from him to the burrow and then glanced over his bedroom. Mind if I borrow this? She grabbed a silk grey tie that was left at the side of his desk from the previous night formal event. I've been in the burrow before, Bunnix. She stood behind him and placed the fabric over his mask. Trust me, the less you know, the better. Butterflies. He wasn't sure if she meant the effect or actual purple butterflies. Do you know? I know everything. Oh, how to sound ominous, Cottontail. Plague sneered at the side of him as Bunnick pushed Mr. Bug forward. Wait! He lifted up the tie a fraction to see his buddy. 
I'll be back soon. There must have been something in his voice for Plag to zoom towards his cheek and give it an unexpected hug. Make sure you do. However, I'm not promising you'll have a controller left when you return. And I'm going to need a cheese order placed. Unless... Is the credit card in the third or fourth drawer? There was a smirk across Plague's lips, but his eyes for a split second held an expression he had only seen once before. Then it vanished. Don't worry, I'll find it. Plag? Adrian played along. He knew what his buddy was trying to do. I mean it. When I return, there had not be a huge bill from the cheese shop and there is only one controller left. Your time out will involve that plastic cheese you love so much. Bunnick sniggered before pressing down the tie once more. Time. The world turned from black to burning. The glow of the transcending colours, how the bright orange gave way to ash grey, covering the sky above into a darkness. Was it day or night right now? He had no idea. But... That was nothing compared to the stifling hate emitted from the burning buildings and the surrounding piercing cries. What had happened to Paris? When had it happened to Paris? When would it happen to him? Where was Ladybug? Why? He turned round and was about to flood Bunnicks with a mountain of questions as he noticed her stepping back into the burrow. Wait! Aren't you helping? This is me helping, Buggy. She shrugged her shoulders. I need to be able to form a plan and jump into another time if... If I should fail? Mr. Bug tilted his head to the side, gesturing to his surroundings. Can you at least tell me something? What happened? At the moment, your guess is as good as mine as to what actually happened, she sighed as he raised his eyebrows. All I know is you are facing Lady Blanc. I can't say or know more, just that I needed to collect you and to be Mr. Bug. She stepped back into the white circle. When you win, I'll be back to collect you. He held up his hand, but the glowing white closed in on itself, leaving him alone, standing on a roof in this nightmare. The city that he loved so much, had pushed himself to protect every day, was destroyed. It was burning. Flashes of two years previously, the moment they had almost lost to Shadowmoth, the night he'd become Monarch, and three versions of Strike Back, the Sentimonters had terrorised the city, burning it to the ground with his catalysm amongst the other abilities, but this was not then. He hadn't gone back in time. They had already faced it and won. Well, not won, but destroyed the monsters, used the tiny bugs to fix the city and the people within it. There would be no need for Mr. Bug, for Ladybug had been there with her cat beside her, and yet... If it wasn't the past, nor his present, then it had to be his future. No, he refused this was waiting for him. After what he and Ladybug had been through, they deserved to win. They deserved the good ending. Not this, not now, not ever. He was in love with Marinette. He was partners with Ladybug. Wait, Marinette? Where was she in all this? He scanned around him, trying to gain a sense of bearing with all the crumble and broken landmarks. He couldn't see a kumtai's villain. He couldn't hear one. He slipped off the yo-yo from around his waist and dialed in Marinette's number from heart. Instantly, it went to voicemail. Taking a steady breath, he tried not to panic. He tried again. Voicemail. Fear was building. Heart was racing. Maybe they aren't working because no cell towers. Yeah, that was it. It wasn't anything. It didn't mean... He knew he had a job to do. He knew he had to focus on the task at hand. 
but knowing Marinette would be in here? Somewhere amongst the wreckage? How could he focus on anything else? Granted, he didn't know how far into the future he'd come, but fingers crossed, he would find her and his extended family safe in the bakery. It would only take a second and then he would find his villain, help his partner and stop this from ever happening. It was harder to manoeuvre around the buildings than he had imagined. Without his baton to lever across the rooftops, he could only rely on crumbled chimney stacks to anchor the yo-yo to. In the distance, he could make out a partial outline of Notre Dame and the river down below which was filled with chunks of broken bridges and floating vehicles. He veered to the right and landed on the roof of his school and stared at the building which once used to be the bakery, but was now devastated, much like his heart. No, 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 this couldn't be. This didn't mean a pit of despair formed inside of him. No, shake it off. He couldn't risk it. The truth hit him. He couldn't risk being akumatized. Not here, not now. He was brought to do a job, and once it was done, he could go back to his time, wrap his arms around the one he loved, and never, ever let her go. He let out a gruff cough and smudged away the tears. Adrian, can it be? A familiar distorted voice called out. He spun round as another set of boots landed on the roof beside him. Instinct took over as he swung the yo-yo in a circle, not believing what he was seeing. Now this really had to be a nightmare. And then Bunnock's words he hadn't fully grasped now repeated in his head. Lady Blanc. Adrian, how, how can you be here, dressed as my own bugaboo? I thought I lost you, but here you are. Ladybug? But the figure covered in white looked more like Lady Noir. The design of the suit, the long braid instead of his usual tail, the cat ears. What had happened to her? To plague? To transform the suit from black to ethereal white? I'm no longer Ladybug. I can no longer be her. She inched closer as he shifted back. I'm not even Lady Noir. I'm Lady Blanc now. But if you give me your miraculous Adrian, I can fix this. I can do what? Adrian? Why do you call me? I'm not. We haven't. He held up his hand to stop her. I know. I know you have been my kitty all along. You are my love and there is still a chance we can be together. You know? How? Why would you? My lady. We are partners, but we aren't. I'm with Marinette. <laughs> she let out a cold laugh that would forever haunt him. His body shuddered. Yes? He couldn't believe that this person in front of him was really his partner, his ladybug. She had to be a senti monster sent by Monarch. Where is she? What have you done with her? It's me, my love. Can you not see it? A tear trickled down her cheek, staining over her white mask. We were always destined to be together. You and I against the world. No! No, I cannot. I will not believe it. Marinette is certainly not Ladybug, nor is she Lady... I'm not Ladybug. I am Lady Blanc. And if you hand me your miraculous, I can fix all this. Never. She would never ask that of me. He forced out a laugh that felt strange in his throat. <laughs> I have faced sin to monsters like you before. Pretending to be my partner? I will not fall for it twice. I will find where you're a muck. Oh, Kitty. You have always been so blind. 
Why can't you see it's me? Your love. You're lying. If not, tell me where the Akuma is. He darted his hand forward, yanked off the bell from her neck, and smashed it with his foot. But there was nothing. Nothing happened, and nothing flew out. If I were a scent monster, could I do this? She held up a hand between the two of them and produced a glowing white orb of light he had never seen before. It wasn't a power the cat miraculous had, but he could tell it was used to destroy. I thought I would make it all burn, but now Bunnix has brought me you. We can make a wish. Lady? Milady. He tried to control his voice and sound softer. Tell me what happened. Why are you Lady Blanc? He gently placed his hand on her arm and looked her in the eye. Her ocean blue eyes. No. What she was saying wasn't true. She had to be one. She had to be one. This would be where the center monster would fail. Lady Blanc consumed the power back into her fingers before sliding them down and entwining them between his. I don't know how much time has passed since your present and mine, Kitty. At what point Bunnix collected you, so I can't say too much. She said calmly and was sounding far too familiar to his own ladybug that he was comfortable with. But it was a mistake. I shouldn't have agreed to the swap, even for a few days, and however much you told me you were comfortable with Tiki, I knew better. I should have listened to my gut. This is all my fault. Milady, how can you say that? How could you know? With his free hand, he wiped away the waterfall of tears. It's... All my fault. I couldn't protect you. It's all my fault. I couldn't save you. It's all my fault that you got hit by clout along with the power of the Akuma. It's my fault that I didn't catch you in time. And now the earrings are broken. I couldn't save you. I lost Tiki and you at the same time. To watch my partner turn into the love of my life and yet... Dead? Adrian? Adrian, tell me I haven't lost you. Tell me we can fix this. Marinette? He encloses his arms around her. What she said? How was that even possible that he in this lifetime was antiki how how did you become a power a force took over it was pure vengeance and grief part mine part plague before i knew it i was fighting the villain and Release the Kuma, but instead of destroying it, I didn't fight back. There was nothing left to fight for, but now history repeated itself. You have me now. I'm here. Tell me what to do, my lady. Give me your miraculous. Her hand shifted upwards as he pushed her back from him. No, we don't need to do that. To make a wish when I can create a lucky charm. You still don't understand, Adrian. What has been seen can't be unseen. No one can take that away from you except me. I can make a wish where we can start afresh and you won't be haunted by nightmares. This will destroy everything if you don't help me now. I know you have to destroy this world to build a new one. I can't let you do that. I can't take that risk. 
but you are willing to live with the fact that this could be your future? As long as I have you, Marinette, by my side, I thought that too, and then I had to watch you die. But I could make a life for us where there is no monarch, there is no risk, where you are safe and alive. We are together, always. We don't get to make that choice. We are fighting so that monarch or whoever doesn't get to make that choice. I thought you would be with me. I thought we would do this together. I thought you loved me, Adrian. But maybe knowing I am your partner has changed how you feel about me. I love you, Marinette, and I am here with you now. We can reverse what has happened here. But the wish? That is a Lakuma talking. She shoved him backwards and taking him by surprise. Then I will have to take them from you. She pulled out a white baton and struck him against his side. Milady! He spun the yo-yo for a shield. Tell me where the Kuma is and you will see. He continued to edge backwards across the roof as she fired out bolts of white explosions. Where could it be? Was it her baton? Standing at the edge, he flung the yo-yo into the air. Lucky charm! Out of the pink cloud, a beaded bracelet dropped into his outstretched hands. It was the same one he, Adrian, had created for Marinette. If we make a wish, Marinette, we will not only forget this moment, but all the beautiful moments we have shared before this. How we came together. How I fell in love with you. Long before I even realised. He held the lucky charm into the air. She paused and reached into the small concealed pocket and removed the lucky charm she had gifted him. As I held you in my arms, this fell out of your pocket. You called it your own personal lucky charm, but in the end? Before Lady Blank had time to react, Mr. Bug leapt forward wrapping the magical cable around her and grabbed the other end of the charm, breaking it in two. With a flick of his wrist, he freed Lady Blanc and captured the Akuma. Good riddance, butterfly. Quickly, he threw the lucky charm into the air. Miraculous ladybugs! The white gave way to black as his lady, his marinette, grumbled to her knees. How was it? He could still remember that it was her. Cat? Adrian? Her voice was low and cracked. I'm not your cat, he said quickly, holding out a hand for her. Bunnix? She said, sounding surprised. He nodded as she gestured behind him. We don't have much time before someone comes looking. Bunnix called out from the burrow, gesturing him inside. She's right. You had better... She was searching his face, knowing his expression was probably giving away too much information. He opened his mouth, but found her finger was sealing it shut. You can't, Kitty. Not now. Find me in your time. She smiled and let her finger drop. Go. He stepped into the burrow, this time without a blindfold, but kept his head down until he reached Bunnock's gesturing to another opening. Wait. Once I step through, do I forget? The weight in which a hand was planted on his shoulder told him the answer. What has been seen can't be unseen, Adrian. I'm sorry. She? Lady Blanc. Marinette said the same thing. That is why she wanted to make a wish. She said it would change everything. But I have found that change isn't always a bad thing. She smiled at his questioning stare. History repeated itself today, but maybe that had to happen for you to fully understand. What do you mean history repeated? She said that too. How will that? 
he gestured to the now cloudy circle. What I just experienced? Help me understand, Bunnocks. Talk to Ladybug. Marinette. Adrian. Heart to heart. You both have a story to tell and have loved both sides of the mask. She paused. I believe now is the right time to be honest with one another. But that future, could it still happen? You're a smart kid, Adrian. You know time doesn't work that way. Every choice, every change creates a ripple across the waves. You know, you used to talk more direct before the miraculous Alex. Bunnix laughed, pushing him towards a hole. I'm gonna need those back. He stood in his bedroom and stared at the black and red spotted suit still covering his body. Spots off. His room filled with a red light as Tiki flew out of the earrings and landed against his cheek, hugging it tightly. He felt the well of emotions he had been holding at bay build up inside of him. Thank you, Adrian. I'll see you soon. The little red Kwame whispered into his ear. He gave her a broken smile before removing the miraculous and the Kwame was gone again. He dropped them into Bunnock's outstretched hand. She will want to see you, and I'll let her know it's time. You both can reveal the truth. Bunnock winked, disappearing back into the burrow as it closed shut. Thank you for listening to part one of History Repeated. I hope you enjoyed it. Part two will be coming out very soon, so don't worry. If you did, make sure you smash that like button. Show me some love and it really does help to support the channel and it supports the YouTube algorithms and all that lot. Um, make sure you comment down below what you thought of this and what will happen in the next one. I love to read your comments, guys, so please do post them down below and make sure you subscribe so you do not miss out on part two of this story and other one shots and other series that are happening at the moment. And I hope you are good after that roller coaster and I will speak to you soon. Bye.